king still reigns supreme. I don't believe in luck. The fight is over! Vladimir Restovac is a very dangerous guy. This is heavyweight uh, fighting. Things can go wrong. Glory, welterweight champion of the world! The glory belt from Zenith HQ to Bahala. Harut is a different kind of animal. Welcome to Inside Glory. I'm Todd Grisham. As we march on throughout 2018, Glory just concluded one of its biggest shows to date with Glory 53 Lil. Two title fights took place, one in the lightweight division and one in the women's super bantamweight division. We also saw two of Glory's top ranked light heavyweights squaring off. Sidichai remained the one to beat in the lightweight division as he defeated number three ranked Tajani Bezdati for his fourth title defense. And it was Anissa Mexen continuing her dominance as she defended her super bantamweight title for the first time. Spring continues to warm up as we look forward to June and it heats up even more as we head into the summer of Glory 2018. On June 2nd, Glory hits the UK for the first time in five years with a massive card featuring two world title fights plus the very best of British kickboxing versus the best of the rest of the world at Glory 54 Birmingham. Famous as the birthplace of heavy metal, the industrial heartland of England headlines the heaviest of them all as the undisputed king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven, faces down a challenge from the scorpion sting, Milan Brestovac, in a huge heavyweight title rematch. In their last outing, Verhoeven was triumphant, but it only takes one head kick from the Croatian to turn the lights out and throw the heavyweight division into turmoil. The most competitive division in glory sees new welterweight champion Harut Gregorian make his first title defense against number one contender Aleem Nabiev, who looks for the win, the belt, and his fourth win in four glory fights. And the land of hope and glory sees a roll call of seven British Bulldogs across four divisions, including glory standouts Bailey Sugden and Jamie Bates, who battle the best strikers in the world, featuring Johnson, Abraham, Baya, Jong and Alunga. June 2nd, Glory 54, Birmingham. Coming up on Inside Glory, we take a closer look at the upcoming title fights in the heavyweight and welterweight divisions when I'm joined by my broadcast partner, Joseph Baltolini. Our fighter profile features Harut Gregorian as he prepares for his first title defense. And we look back on the 15 straight victories in five year glory unbeaten streak for the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. And speaking of whom, we'll follow the champ to Manchester, England, as he trains with one of the greats. This is Inside Glory. Saturday, June 2nd, it's two title fights in one night at Glory 54 Birmingham. Riding a 15-fight win streak, the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven puts the heavyweight title on the line against the Scorpion Sting, Milan Brestovac. Plus, welterweight world title action as number one ranked Aline Nabiev takes on the champ, Harut Gregorian, and British beast, Bailey Sugden. Glory 54 Birmingham, Saturday, June 2nd. Check time and date in your area. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Inside Glory, I'm Todd Grisham. Winner of 53 career fights, 16 and one inside the glory ring, this one-time prince, now called King, has a five-year glory unbeaten streak, has won 15 consecutive times and has six title defenses. While few can argue he's the best heavyweight on the planet, Rico himself always strives to improve. And he recently traveled to Manchester, England to train with one of the great trainers in the world, Peter Fury. Glory came back to the UK after five years. Said I want to highlight the card. We're here in uh, Bolton, England, in the Team Fury camp to uh, prepare uh, Rico Verhoeven together with uh, Peter Fury for his upcoming fight at Glory 54 in Birmingham. 
This is where the action happens. My fighters have to be fighting men from the heart. Boxing is a skill, ultimately, but you've got to be prepared to go in the trenches and have a fight when it's needed. You need to look for a trainer that has the same vision as, as you have. That's exactly what Peter does, and he always says, boxing is a thinking man's game. And that's exactly how we look at, uh, at kickboxing. So we try to think more and think about step two, three, and four, instead of just giving a punch and taking a punch back. He's a perfect athlete for the fight game. Not undefeated and right through the division for five years in the run, if you ain't something special. He's totally dedicated, he listens, and he's a, he's a, he's a good learner. He does everything he's told and he perfects it until he gets it right. In boxing, you have 12 rounds, so you have time. In kickboxing, it's just stand up, straight up action for three rounds. It's a lot of fun for people to watch. Don't take your eye one second off the fight because it can be finished. It's It's a proper fighting man's sport. And I know what they go through in that ring and I can just imagine the kicks that go in. It shows a fighting spirit that a human being can put himself through it. Vladan Restovac is a very dangerous guy. He got only losses from my team in glory. The rest, he beat everybody by knockout. His kicks are lethal. The left kick is very dangerous. He can disguise that kick. He knocked out Hesley with it. The left kick to the head! Enrico Verhoeven's breath has been taken away too! Oh, dang it, that was crazy. <laughs> I'm taking him very, very serious. Look, he's six foot six, south four, he's a big unit. This is heavyweight uh, fighting. Things can go wrong. Like I always say, there's always room for improvement. I keep evolving and I keep getting better. Let's see where, where this fight is gonna is gonna end up, you know. Uh, I hope it's gonna be with rest of on his back. When we return, I sit down with Glory's heavyweight champion and look back at his five-year, 15-fight Glory winning streak. But up next, we profile Glory's new welterweight champion, Harut Gregorian, as he prepares for his first title defense against the number one ranked and extremely dangerous, Aline Nabiev. Saturday, June 2nd, Glory returns to England for a right royal ruckus at Glory 54 Super Fight Series. With a light heavyweight headliner as British Road to Glory standout Razor Waitman challenges superstar Daniel Lunga, fan favorite Josh Johnson, and number two contender Bad News Baya in a battle for lightweight contention. And British Bulldog Jamie Bates heads up a four-man welterweight qualifying tournament. Glory 54 Super Fight Series, Saturday, June 2nd. Check date and time in your area. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Inside Glory. The welterweight division has turned itself upside down over the past year and a half. It all started with the once unbeatable Nicky Holskin, who saw his unbeaten streak, stopped at 11 at the hands of Cedric Dumbay. Dumbay, who defeated Holskin at Glory Collision, defended his title twice before his rival Myrtle Grunhart avenged an earlier defeat and beat Dumbay for the belt at Glory 44 Chicago. But Grunhart's reign didn't last long. When his first title defense, he was stopped by knockout by his enemy, Harut Gregorian, at Glory 50. Can Gregorian make it last this time as a champion? But he's full of confidence, as you'll see, as he's the subject of this month's fighter profile. Het was een mooi gevoel. Ik ken dat echt niet uitleggen welk gevoel dat was. Ja, dat, dat was, ik zeg het zo, dat was niet alleen de Glory Belt op het spel. Dat was gewoon uh, wat er allemaal gebeurd was. En, uh, ja, dat was uh, gelijk op een uh, handen wedstrijd. We allebei goed be alle, gefocust. Op dit moment uh, vind ik het eigenlijk een beetje ontploft. We told Haru to get the pressure on Myrtle again. En ja, yeah, throw bombs en hij did.
Ja, op dit moment uh, was ik zo blij dat ik zelfs uh, Nick niet ging meer aan pakken. <laughs> ja, ik denk dat hij een heel big bomb met me heeft de fight. Luckily, I have a good chin, <laughs> so I uh, I took it like a man. <laughs> he still says he doesn't know, but I think there's some hatred in it because of all the trainings I gave him. Can you imagine if he would have lost what he would have done? <laughs>
I really like someone that gets into the ring with me and wants to put up a fight, but in the end thinks like, what the hell am I doing here? Let's talk about in China, you faced off against Bigfoot Silva. He was a really skilled fighter, and he was trying to land as, as many shots as possible, but because of that, his energy went down really fast. So then after the, after the first round, he had nothing to say anymore. It was finished. Well, your next challenge may be your toughest ever. Five rounds with the Goliath. I'm just at a different level, and he's going to see that and feel that. It's going to be a knockout. We'll step aside one more time, and when we return, I'll be joined by my broadcast partner, Bazooka Joe, Joseph Baltolini. You're watching Inside Glory. The wait is over. Here he is in the flesh, the former Glory welterweight champion of the world, Joseph Valtellini. I know you're geared up for Glory 54. You've never been to England before. We're headed to Birmingham and the main event for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's Rico Verhoeven versus Milan Brestovac or the King versus the Sting. Yeah, I and mean, this is uh, the rematch happening. They first fought at Glory 28 Paris and it's what we expected. Uh, you know, Brestovac is a southpaw um, and that's what his Sting is, that left high kick that comes out of nowhere. He's knocked out most of those opponents with it. Um, but Rico does something really well. He pressures you, and he's going to have to stay really close to Mladen to avoid that left kick, to avoid that sting, and that's how he remains the king. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Is that how simple this fight is? If he lands the left high kick, he wins. If he doesn't, he loses? Well, that's on paper, yes, because every time you think Brestovac is out, he finds that left high kick. And the, what's so amazing about that left high kick is he'll throw it from such a close range. If you watch his head kick knockout versus Jafar Wilness, he threw that head kick with no space in between. So even though Rico's in close range, he has to watch out. And what he did to Hesti Vergas was amazing. Just one moment and it's over. As for Rico Verhoeven, the last time we saw him was against Jamal Ben Sadiq. And in the first round, he was really hurt. And a lot of people were thinking, hey, maybe this is a, a new thing for Rico that he's not as invincible as we once believed. Yeah, and that was one of the most exciting fights we've seen. And it was uh, that early hurting of Rico got everybody excited. But um, Rico showed why he's the champion. He was able to control himself um, and dominate as the fight went on and able to get a, an impressive finish in the fifth round. You mentioned this is a rematch. When you watch the first fight, what can Brestovac do differently this time that he might be more successful? Well, he's just got to be a little bit more confident with his striking. Um, it is five rounds, and Rico has the ability to go hard all five rounds. Uh, so what Brestovac has to do is he has to go out there, leave it all out there, try to create as much space as he can, and just let the kicks go. So the heavyweight championship will be on the line in Birmingham. So too will the welterweight title, Harut Gregorian defending for the first time against the sensational Alim Nabiev. Yeah, Alim Nabiev has looked incredible in his last few fights. Um, he's just so tricky. He has the ability to fight so many different ways. And I think that's his key to success where Harut Gregorian, it's no surprise how he's gonna fight. He likes the pressure. He comes from Hemmer's gym. So you know there's gonna be a lot of volume and a lot of pressure and a lot of power. So um, expect Harut to go at it where uh, Nabiev's going to try to use his footwork and his trickiness. Harut Gregorian bulldozed right through Myrtle Grunhardt in Chicago to win the World Tour title. Is that the strategy for Nabiev, come out guns blazing? Yeah, Harut's the shorter fighter, and, and, and Alim's such a tall, rangy fighter, so Harut's got to really go in there. Um, he's got to control the center of the ring like he always does. Try to put Nabiev against the ropes, and that's where it's best for him to unload those power shots. It's incredible. We've had four different welterweight champions in the last 18 months. Nabiev will look to make it five. Also on that card, we've got Josh Johnson, the resurgent yeah. Josh Johnson, taking on Christian Bayer. 
Yeah, he looked amazing in his last fight against Stoyan Koprovlinski. John C. came out really strong in his glory career, and he fought the best. He fought Sidichai, Georgian, Giorgio Petrosian. Um, but he had a little slump, losing fights that he should have won. Um, so in his last fight against Stoyan, he just showed the John C. we know. Very technical, uh, good distance and range control, good combinations. So if that John C. comes in against Baia, we're probably going to see a different match than last time. As for Baia, he's trying to bounce back after a tough world title loss to Sidichai. Yeah, so two things could have happened from Baia. It either gave him the confidence that he can fight the best in the world, um, or it kind of shut him down, kind of frustrated him a little bit. After that fight against Sidicha, he did go to Thailand, so he's probably trying to learn the Thai style a little bit more. Um, but he's got power, and he can put anybody out with that left hook. June 2nd in Birmingham, plenty of great British talent on the card. Give us two fighters to keep our eye on. Well, it's got to be welterweight Jamie Bates and Bailey Sudgen, the bad boy. Um, the bad boy has been incredible lately. He's fighting all the top names, um, all the up-and-coming stars. He's the young guy in the featherweight division everyone needs to watch for. Every time he fights, he gets better. Um, man, the future is bright for him. As for Jamie, he's tall, he's rangy, and he's very well-rounded. Um, he's coming off a loss against Ivan Dannenberg, but he looks motivated following him on social media. He looks better than ever, and I'm excited to see him back. And Jamie Bates showed us some real toughness, refusing to go out against Ivan Dannenberg despite being hurt. He's as tough as they come. Wait, I love talking kickboxing with you. That's what I do best, my man. And I'll see you June 2nd in Birmingham. I'll see you there. And of course, all eyes that night will be in the main event. Heavyweight Championship of the World, The King versus The Sting. His ascension to kickboxing's throne includes a five-year glory unbeaten streak. Rico Verhoeven! Rico Verhoeven, he's just been so dominant. Any challenger he has really hasn't had a shot against him. I, I fight anybody, you know, I'm the champion. I'm, uh, I'm on top of the mountain. Stand up striking at its best. And you are watching one of the best ever in Rico Verhoeven just... Sting, watch out for that left high kick. It's a doozy. A high kick there from Prestovac. I showcase his more angles in a geometry class. Another oh! high kick, and that is all. Milan and Prestovac. This one ruled a knockout for your winner, Prestovac. I was trying to keep moving. Oh! Lights out in Amsterdam! Milan Prestovac, the left kick to the head, and Rico Verhoeven's breath has been taken away too. And then just when you don't expect it, that high kick comes out of nowhere. That's about a 240-pound left head kick by a Croatian nicknamed the Scorpion Sting. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Inside Glory. Be sure to join us Saturday, June 2nd for Glory 54 Birmingham. And then it's the Summer of Glory 2018, and it takes off with four can't-miss events. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And catch up on all the Glory features and fights on our Glory YouTube channel. I'm Todd Grisham, and I'll see you in England. Are you ready for gold?